and welcome to a video lecture on the cardiovascular system. Of the five liters of blood in the circulatory system, the heart pumps that volume about 1,400 times every day. That's 7,000 liters of blood pumped by the heart in one day. Your heart has been beating ever since it was formed, six weeks after conception. You are eight millimeters long, or about a quarter of an inch. An adult resting heart rate is around 70 beats per minute. It will beat over two and a half billion times in an average lifetime. In our diagrams, we distinguish between the, the different blood vessels by color. Arteries are red and carry blood away from the heart, while veins are blue and carry blood to the heart. The heart and all various blood vessels make up the cardiovascular system. Since blood remains in the heart and vessels, it's called a closed system. Insects have an open system. Their hearts pump blood into an open body cavity without the use of blood vessels. Mollusks, like clams and snails, have similar open systems. The circulatory system is the pickup and delivery system of the body. As all of the cells perform aerobic respiration, they need oxygen delivered and carbon dioxide picked up. Nutrients are picked up from the digestive system and delivered to each cell of the body. Hormones hitch a ride in the bloodstream. Wastes are picked up from each cell and delivered to the liver or the kidneys for extraction. And heat is distributed all over the body via the blood. We can divide the human cardiovascular system into two pathways. One is the pulmonary circulation. This involves blood flow to and from the lungs. Blood low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide is pumped to the lungs where it dumps off the carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen to bring back to the lungs. The exchange happens at the alveoli these are tiny air sacs in the lungs. The other is the systemic circulation, which delivers oxygen, rich blood, to all the cells of the body and returns it to the heart, low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide. The two systems cross over in the heart. The heart is located between the lungs, slightly left of center in the chest. Its lower half, inappropriately called the apex, is angled off to the left. The heart is constructed of all major tissue types. Being a hollow organ, its walls are layered in three distinctive layers. They are, from the outside in, the epicardium. It's a serous membrane, meaning it's a double layer of epithelium and connective tissue. The outer layer is the parietal pericardium, and the inner, the visceral pericardium. A space in between is the pericardial cavity, in which is a serous fluid. Serous fluid is a viscous fluid that reduces friction as the heart moves in the body cavity. The next layer is the thickest. It's the myocardium, composed of cardiac muscle. It, of course, is responsible for the contractions which pump the blood through the blood vessels. Lastly is the endocardium, made of connective tissue and epithelium. The endocardium provides protection to the myocardium and the heart valves. The external anatomy of the heart is worth learning. Here, we're looking at the anterior view. We'll spend time in, in lab looking at a model heart and dissect one as well. We'll take the time to label all the intricate parts then. But here are some of the major external parts. The muscle portion here that makes up much of the body of the heart are the outer walls of the two large chambers called the left and right ventricles respectively. Above appear as flaps on the surface of the heart called the left and right auricles. These are the top chambers of the heart. Together with the two lower ventricles, the heart has four chambers. The largest vein delivering blood to the heart is the vena cava. The upper portion is the superior and the lower is the inferior. The aorta is the main artery carrying blood away from the heart to the rest of the body. And the pulmonary trunk carries blood from the heart 
to the lungs. I'll save the rest for you to discover in lab class. Here's the interior of the heart. Here, the two lower chambers, the left and right ventricles. These one-way valves, the tricuspid and mitral valves. The mitral valve is sometimes called the bicuspid valve. And they separate the, the lower ventricles from the upper chambers, the left and right atria. And two more valves that keep blood from flowing back into the heart once it's pumped out. The pulmonary valve leading to the pulmonary trunk and the aortic valve leading to the aorta. Once you have the anatomy down, you can start to learn the flow of the blood into and out of the heart. Just follow me here. Don't try copying down what I'm about to say on this slide. I'll let you do that on the next. The heart is a double pump. One pump for the systemic circulation and the other pump for the pulmonary circulation. Its right side receives oxygen poor blood from the body and the left side receives oxygen rich blood from the lungs. We'll start with blood in the systemic circulation that's low on oxygen. All systemic veins empty into the vena cava. The vena cava empties into the right atrium. As the right atrium muscle contracts, the blood flows through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The right ventricle contracts and pumps blood through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk where it divides into the left and right pulmonary arteries on its way to the lungs. Blood is now in the pulmonary circulation. At the lungs, the blood delivers the carbon dioxide and picks up oxygen and starts its way back to the heart through the left and right pulmonary veins, seen here and here. It empties into the left atrium. The left atrium contracts, passing blood through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. The left ventricle contracts, pushing blood through the aortic valve into the aorta and into the rest of the body. The blood is now in the systemic circulation. Let's do that again, but this time I'll list it out for you so you can write it down. Again, starting with blood in the systemic circulation, low in oxygen, we'll call it venous blood. All these veins empty into the vena cava, to the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve, into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary arteries, on its way to the lungs. At the lungs, the blood turns around, travels through the pulmonary veins back to the heart, and into the left atrium. From there, it passes through the mitral valve and into the left ventricle. Through the aortic valve, into the aorta, and into the systemic circulation. Practice that with a, with a diagram of the heart so that you can do it by heart. Now the heart has its own circulation. It needs its own supply of blood, and that's provided by the coronary blood vessels. Coronary arteries, here shown in red, originate from the base of the aorta and supply oxygen-rich blood and nutrients to the heart muscle. The blue vessels are coronary veins which receive the oxygen-poor blood and carry it to an enlarged vein on the back of the heart called the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus empties into the right ventricle. Take the time in lab to learn, to learn some of the major coronary vessels. Now, the contractions of the heart are coordinated by a sort of cardiac nervous system. I'll cover that in another lecture. But here, you'll have to imagine the heart moving. This is going to be known as the cardiac cycle. That is, the contraction and relaxation of each of the chambers. When the two atria relax, they fill with blood. This lowers blood pressure in the body and is called diastole. The atria contract and push blood through the tricuspid and mitral valves, respectively. This fills the two ventricles. As the atria relax again, the ventricles contract and force blood into the body. This raises the blood pressure and is called systole. 
Consequently, the opening and closing of the heart valves during this activity actually creates the lub-dub sound that you hear on the heart. I think that's plenty to absorb for now. I can't wait to get back to the lab and start investigating some of the functors of the heart. So we'll see you there, and don't be late.